Uh, hello. Uh, sorry for the darkness. I wanted to talk about this email I just sent out. It was a question that appeared on a web assign that I removed. And the reason I removed it is not because it's an not because it's an interesting question. You know, come to think of it, I think I sold them short when I said the a correct answer wasn't there. I misinterpreted what the question was. And this is a lesson is you have to read the question carefully. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the question for you and I'm going to read it and then we'll explain what happened. And it turned out that those of you who asked me for advice the first time, I gave the correct advice, but I didn't really give you a good explanation of why it, why it works. So without, there was a problem in the, in the question itself though. They use the words planes incorrectly. But let's go ahead and do this anyway, just because it's an interesting question. And so let's go ahead and do the following. You're given the function f of x, y equals x. And you want it to find the volume bounded by the surface the z equals zero xy plane and the boundaries y uh, equals zero and y equals the square root of and I'm going to use this number here y equals 49 minus x squared now the key word here is volume and you see this particular this particular function here, if you look at it, and this is a mistake I made, I didn't really look at it. This, the graph of this function is in fact a plane. Uh, here's your, here's Z, uh, here's X and here's Y. If you like draw Y equals X, it looks like this. But in fact, um, f of x, y equals x, well, let's just take a look. z is equal to x is what this, this is saying. This is z is equal to x. So the plane is going to look something like this. That is, it's a plane like so, where it goes below the z equals zero axis and goes above. So when we want the volume, to calculate the volume, we want the volume below and above. And we want to count these as positive values. BOL. That is, if we have a part of the z thing that goes below, we don't want it to cancel the volume of the stuff that's above. Because remember, this plane is slicing like this. So what's going to happen is if you look at this, um, like, like in this case here, and in fact, the z-axis is like here, I mean, the uh, xy plane, part of the plane is going to be above the xy axis and part's going to be below. And, and they will cancel each other perfectly over the symmetric region. So what we're really doing is we want to integrate. Let's take a look at the y. y equals zero is here. y equals square root of 49 minus x squared is here. This is, and our z axis, I mean our z, our plane f of x, f of xy equals x is cutting like this, like this. So it'll be the, the, the surface will be below the x axis surface is below z equals zero here. And it's above here. Because remember, this thing is cutting like that. So what we really are integrating because we want to we want to count the volume as positive. Well, 
what we really are integrating over this particular region are y, I'm going to use a dx slice like this, dx. I'm integrating the function, I'm not integrating x, I'm integrating absolute x to make this a positive function. So this is y equals zero to the square root of 49 minus x squared. Make sure you can read that. Uh, it's probably no better. So let me just make this bigger. The, this is correct, but I just want to make this a bigger thing here. The square root of 49 minus x squared, zero. I'm going to integrate uh, x dy dx. And this goes from minus seven to uh, seven, zero to seven zero. And we're integrating absolute x rather than x because we want this volume to be positive. Now what we find here is because this region is symmetric with respect to x, this is going to be exactly equal to two like this. And because now we've, we've isolated x to make x positive, that now we're just integrating x. And what we've done is we make this, we, uh, by making this absolute value, taking the absolute value out, we multiply by two because of the symmetry of this function here. Because remember, for the part that goes underneath the xy plane, it's gonna be the same magnitude. So we just multiply it by, so basically what we're doing, this is a side on view. This is a Z, this is a X. The Y is coming out right at you. The function looks like this. So it's, so in order to get, make this all positive, this is a Z equals X. We switch to Z equal absolute X. And then to keep our work easy, we just multiply by two to get the same area. So it's multiplied by two. So this double this. Now, when we do this, the, the, uh, the integral is not too bad. X, Y evaluated between zero square root of 49 minus X squared. And then doing this quickly, because you've probably already thought about this problem. We have x square root of 49 minus x squared dx. Okay, but there is this two right here. So now this is a u substitution with u is 49 minus x squared. du is minus two x dx. So minus one half du is equal to dx. So it's two minus one half interval. This is now your u. And I'm going to go ahead and change my limits. If x is seven, that's a zero. I mean, that's, a, uh, if x is zero, um, this is 49. And if x is seven, that's a zero. So we got that right there. So let's take a picture of that. Then let's go ahead and finish this up. This won't take too long. These minuses will flip this. So this turns out to be the integral from um, zero to 49, u to one half du equals u to three halves times two thirds. And then we end up getting 49 to the three halves minus zero. Well, that's 49, that's two thirds 
times seven cubed. And uh, I get lazy with my calculator, but um, this two helped out, but let's see here. Seven raised to the third. Uh, so that works out to be 343 times two. Six eighty six. Okay, so that's that. Nice problem. I took it off because I didn't really go get you into the doing the volume with using the absolute value, but that is what's going on there. So, thanks for watching.